I'm Sean Yo, and welcome back to Forward Together. Thank you for listening. On this podcast, I'm reading the 2019 platform of the Green Party of Canada, and I'm sharing it as nine easy to listen to episodes. I really hope that this podcast helps making learning about our platform simple and easy. Our platform is a clear vision for Canada and full of so many great ideas and I'm so excited to share them with you today. Not everyone likes reading long documents, and not everyone can find the time to read something this long. That's why I'm doing this. We're also committed to being inclusive in how we share our platform, and we want to make our platform accessible to as many Canadians as possible. The idea of this podcast is to give you an audiobook of the Green Party platform, so you can learn what the Green Party is all about while you're on your way to work or out for a run or whatever you love to do while you listen to podcasts. You can get the platform yourself by going to greenparty.ca slash platform and you can look up who your local Green Party candidate is at greenparty.ca slash candidates and just put in your postal code. However you're listening, welcome and we'd love to hear from you. Please, if you have time and interest, send us an email at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. If you have any platform questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send us and do our best to reply as well. We're hoping to be able to share some of the questions and feedback as well. So if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, please mention that in your message. Okay, let's get started with episode 7. In this episode, we're going to cover the green vision for renewing the social contract. Renewing the social contract. Canada has a strong tradition of providing the social supports that people need to live fulfilling lives. The social contract between the Government of Canada and the people of Canada, funded through progressive taxation, is grounded in the principle that society has a duty to provide social services that give everyone the opportunity to contribute to society and live a dignified, secure life. After 30 years of government withdrawal from some sectors such as housing and failing to keep pace with changing and expanding needs in others, the social contract between government and citizens is frayed. Rapid economic and social changes have created new conditions that require creative program responses. Poverty, income insecurity, student debt, lack of affordable housing, unsafe drinking water, lack of access to family doctors and unaffordable childcare are not inevitable in one of the richest countries in the world. At worst, they are the result of policy decisions. At best of policy neglect. Renewing the social contract is a Green Party priority. We must start by recommitting to a vision of Canada as a just society built around a progressive, fair, and compassionate social safety network. Healthcare. This section of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goal, good health and well-being. Even though the provinces have jurisdiction over healthcare delivery, The Canada Health Act sets the terms by which this happens. It provides universal primary health care to all Canadians and ensures that this care is comparable across the country. The ability of provinces to deliver on this mandate depends on health funding transfers from Ottawa. These transfers have not kept pace with the rapidly changing demographics and emerging crises of mental illness and addiction. At the same time, private health clinics, including blood services, represent a creeping two-tiered system eroding the universal primary health care model. The Green Party is committed to the principles and requirements of the Canada Health Act and to extending that model to other aspects of health care. 
Respecting these principles, we support innovation in the delivery of these services to better meet the changing needs of Canadians. We will work to ensure that every Canadian has a family doctor and that primary care is centered on the patient and is sensitive to issues of social justice, equity, and cultural appropriateness. The federal government can and should lead the way in demonstrating a better model of health care. Greens recognize the unique challenges faced by defined populations such as First Nations people on reserve and Inuit, members of the Canadian forces, veterans, incarcerated peoples, and certain refugee claimants. It is important that these challenges are addressed at a federal level and that vulnerable populations receive equal access to care. The Green Party supports the recommendations of the Parliamentary Committee on Health to expand the Canada Health Act to include prescription drugs dispensed outside of a hospital. Universal Pharmacare is the best way to accomplish both life-saving and cost-cutting goals. Quote, Climate change is the greatest threat to human health in the 21st century. End quote. Pegeen Walsh, Ontario Public Health Association, Executive Director, August 2019. As we move into the era of consequences of climate change, new health imperatives are emerging. The World Health Organization has stated that, quote, climate change is the greatest challenge of the 21st century, threatening all aspects of society in which we live. Public health associations have raised the alarm that climate-related illness is growing and needs urgent attention. According to a report by the Canadian Pediatric Society and the Ontario Public Health Association, climate change is exacerbating a number of child health issues including, quote, heat sickness, poor air quality, water contamination and mental health impacts of natural hazards, extreme weather and displacement, end quote. So far, this issue is flying way under the radar of many health professionals and government health departments. A green government will change that. Restore the Federal Provincial Health Accord. Basing health transfers on demographics and real health care needs in each province. Replacing the current formula based on GDP growth introduced by the Harper government and retained by the Liberals. Expand the single-payer Medicare model to include pharmacare for everyone, as well as free dental care for low-income Canadians. Create a bulk drug purchasing agency and reduce drug patent protection periods. Negotiate the Canada Health Accord to prioritize expansion of mental health and rehabilitation services, reduction in wait times, access to safe abortion services and access to gender-affirming health services, such as hormones, blockers, and surgery. See Section 6, Advancing the Just Society, Advancing LGBTQI2 Plus Rights. Uphold Jordan's principle in full, ensuring Indigenous people receive the health care they need without being delayed by bureaucratic disagreements over jurisdiction. Implement Calls to Action 18-24 through 24 from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission Improving Healthcare for Indigenous Peoples. Support First Nations, Métis and Inuit in rebuilding traditional knowledge systems around healing and wellness, including the formal inclusion of traditional healing within mental wellness and home and community care programs. This process must be led by First Nations, Métis, and Inuit organizations. Reorient Health Canada's mandate towards mental health and addictions, health promotion and disease prevention, and health risks of climate change. Encourage medical associations to train healthcare professionals to understand and engage with climate change related health threats. Address the opioid crisis as a health care issue, not a criminal issue, by declaring a national health emergency. Recognize that fentanyl contamination is why deaths are more accurately described as poisonings than overdoses. Drug possession should be decriminalized, ensuring people have access to a screen supply and their medical support that they need to combat their addictions. Increase funding to community-based organizations to test drugs and make naloxone kits widely available to treat overdoses. 
establish a national mental health strategy and a suicide prevention strategy to address the growing anxieties plaguing Canadians regarding inequality and affordability, the growing precariousness of work and housing, the climate change crisis, social isolation, resurgent racial and ethno-nationalism, and other harms and risks. Protect our blood supply by prohibiting for-profit blood collection services and removing barriers to blood donations not based on science. Ending Poverty This part of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goal of No Poverty. Quote, I am now convinced that the simplest approach will prove to be the most effective. The solution to poverty is to abolish it directly by a now widely discussed measure the guaranteed income." End quote. Martin Luther King Jr., Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community, 1967. The most recent Canadian income survey reveals that 9.5% of Canada's population, about 3.4 million people, lives below the poverty line. Poverty rates are even higher within marginalized and vulnerable groups, such as people living with disabilities, single mothers, and seniors. In a wealthy country like Canada, this is unacceptable. Of all Canada's social problems, child poverty may be the most shameful. In 1989, the old line political parties voted unanimously to end child poverty by the year 2000. Despite recent improvements, far too many Canadian children still grow up in poverty. Child poverty rates are especially high among Indigenous peoples, single-parent households headed by women, and new Canadians. Canada now ranks a dismal 25th out of 38 countries in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD, in terms of relative child poverty rates. In 2018, the Government of Canada developed its first poverty reduction strategy, Opportunity for All, which has adopted the Market Basket Measure, MBM, as Canada's official poverty line. The MBM is a measurement tool that considers what an average basket of goods costs for a Canadian and can vary regionally. When compared against median income and wages, it gives a general sense of the affordability pressures that families face in different parts of Canada. Using existing income supplements like the old age security and child tax benefits, the Liberal government boasts that it has lifted several hundred thousand Canadians out of poverty by nudging them from a few hundred dollars under the poverty line to a few hundred over it. While hundreds more dollars a year can definitely help individuals and families, this current effort can, and should, go much further. We can eliminate child poverty in Canada. We must start by recommitting to a vision of Canada as a just society built around a progressive, fair, and compassionate social safety network. Unlike the old line parties, the Green Party believes reducing child poverty is not just about expanding the middle class. We must undertake real structural change to tackle the root causes of poverty. Poverty is a systemic problem that arises from low wages and insufficient income assistance, a precarious job market, a shortage of affordable housing and quality childcare, and cuts in social programs. It is also tied directly to issues of bias and discrimination on the basis of gender, race, sexual orientation, and citizenship, as well as the ongoing legacy of colonization. Eliminating poverty requires systemic action on all these fronts, with safe, secure housing as a fundamental human right at its core. Greens believe reducing child poverty starts with a stronger commitment to guaranteeing that all families have the ability to provide for their children. Research has demonstrated that programs providing a universal basic income reduces expenditures on health care, since poverty is the single largest determinant of ill health, and the justice system and increased school retention. Such programs are affordable 
but the savings and costs of implementation are experienced in different orders of government. To proceed, we will require cooperation of each province, territory, and indigenous community through a vehicle such as the Council of Canadian Governments. Support for Incomes and Workers Establish a Universal Guaranteed Livable Income GLI. To replace the current array of income supports such as disability payments, social assistance, and income supplements for seniors. Building on the MBM, payment will be set at a livable level for different regions of the country. The negotiation to implement a livable income across the country would take place through the Council of Canadian Governments. Unlike existing income support programs, additional income would not be clawed back. Those earning above a certain total income would pay the GLI back in taxes. Establish the federal minimum wage of $15 per hour. Canada once had a national wage standard, but it was removed by a previous Liberal government. And in that time, regressive wage policies, like training wages well below minimum wage, have been introduced in various provinces. Reinstating a federal minimum wage will create a wage floor for every Canadian, no matter where they live or work. Work with the Council of Canadian Governments and Statistics Canada to set municipal minimum wages in accordance with the differential costs of living across the country. See Section 7, Good Governance, Intergovernmental Collaboration. Design and implement a national mental health strategy to address the link between mental wellness and work productivity. See Section 5, Renewing the Social Contract, Healthcare. Support Private Members Bill C-344, an act to amend the Department of Public Works and Government Services Act, which would require successful bidders on federal infrastructure contracts to maximize the spin-off community benefits of such contracts. This will strengthen opportunities for Indigenous, Métis, and Inuit-owned businesses, social enterprise, cooperatives, and diverse suppliers in communities or nearby where federally funded infrastructure is being built. Enhance use of community benefits agreements to increase economic inclusion and opportunity for marginalized communities of color. Safe, affordable housing. Federal incentives for purpose-built rental housing were eliminated in the 1970s. During decades of encouraging home ownership, federal supports for co-ops, rental housing, social housing, and supportive housing has languished. We now face a national shortage of affordable housing and as a result, a growing problem of homelessness and housing insecurity. The Liberal government's national housing strategy does not address immediate core housing needs across Canada. Funding for affordable housing will roll out over 15 years, but it is needed now. The first time homebuyer grant has been criticized for exacerbating housing speculation and commodification. It is past time that the Government of Canada moves to ensure that everyone has access to safe, affordable housing. The Green Party will enhance the federal government's contribution to meeting the housing needs of Canadians through direct investments, changes to tax policies and lending and granting programs, putting the government's focus where it is urgently needed. Direct investments by the federal government. Legislate housing as a legally protected, fundamental human right for all Canadians and permanent residents. Appoint a Minister of Housing to strengthen the national housing strategy so that it meets the needs for affordable housing that are unique to each province and oversee its implementation in collaboration with provincial ministers. This recognizes that housing is provincial jurisdiction. The target would be 25,000 new and 15,000 rehabilitated units annually for the next 10 years. Increase the National Housing Co-Investment Fund by $750 million for new builds and the Canada Housing Benefit by $750 million for rent assistance for 125,000 households. Create a Canada Co-op Housing Strategy that would update the mechanisms for financing co-op housing in partnership with CMHC, co-op societies, 
credit unions, and other lenders. Eliminate the first-time homebuyer's grant. Financing. Include new and existing housing as eligible infrastructure for funding purposes, allowing the Canada Infrastructure Bank to support provinces and municipal housing projects. Provide financing to non-profit housing organizations and cooperatives to build and restore quality, energy-efficient housing for seniors, people with special needs, and low-income families. Restore tax incentives for building purpose-built rental housing and provide tax credits for gifts of land or of land and buildings to community land trusts to provide affordable housing. Remove the deemed GST whenever a developer with empty condo units places them on the market as rentals. Refocus the core mandate of the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, on supporting the development of affordable, non-market and cooperative housing, as opposed to its current priority of supporting Canadian lenders to de-risk investment in housing ownership. With many housing markets demonstrably overvalued and home ownership rates among the highest in the world, individual home ownership should not be the preoccupation of a public service housing agency and a national housing strategy. Change the legislation that prevents Indigenous organizations from accessing financing through CMHC to invest in self-determined housing needs. Taking care of Canada's children. This part of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goals of no poverty, quality education, and gender equality. Greens believe it is time to put the interests of our children at the center of decision making. If a policy works for our children, it works for our society. Greens will appoint a federal children's advocate to ensure that children's rights are protected. Far too many children are in care, far too many children are in poverty, and far too many of those children are Indigenous. Every Canadian child deserves equal services, from early childhood education to adulthood. Meanwhile, families need child care. Universal child care is fundamental for women's equality, to quote, ramp to equality in the workplace for women. Canada needs a plan, a roadmap to affordable childcare for all children. A green government will collaborate with provinces and territories, local communities, indigenous communities, and the childcare sector to ensure that a comprehensive, short, medium, and long-term policy roadmap based on the principles of universality, affordability, quality, inclusivity, and equity finally become a reality. Canada must dedicate additional resources to making a universal, affordable, early learning and child care ELCC, system a reality. It cannot occur without public funding. Canada needs an ELCC system that contributes to a green Canada. Thus, a Green Party government's child care plan will provide the early educator jobs that sustain local communities. It will also recognize that sparsely un and unevenly available childcare services force parents to take out of their way routes to childcare and work, often by car. Green Party plans for childcare take into account not only parents' convenience, but also climate goals. Location of childcare must reflect the diversity of family needs and be placed along existing public transit routes, including neighborhood schools other local buildings, workplaces, and transportation hubs. The best evidence suggests that ELCC is best suited within the context of other policies that support families and children. A Green Party government will follow the example of Quebec and other countries improving and strengthening maternity slash parental leave by making it more inclusive, more flexible, and better paid. Well-designed ELCC is also fundamental to meeting broader equity and social justice goals for fighting poverty as a foundation for children's lifelong learning and as part of the backbone of a thriving society. Quality childcare yields high social and economic returns in the short and long-term by supporting women's workforce participation, education, and training, 
strengthening children's health, development and well-being in the early years to provide a strong foundation for learning and living in later years. Strengthening inclusion and respect for diversity for children with disabilities, diverse ethnic and racial groups, newcomers and disadvantaged Canadians. Countering Canada's slide towards being a more unequal society. A Green Party government will immediately begin to ramp up federal child care funding to achieve the international benchmark of at least 1% of GDP annually, adding an additional $1 billion each year until this benchmark is reached with a mature ELCC system. We will eliminate GST on all construction costs related to child care spaces. Investing in post-secondary education this part of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goal of quality education. Universal access to quality post-secondary education and skills training is a right, not a privilege. Our society is stronger when the citizenry is informed, critical, and well-educated. Moreover, post-secondary education is part of Canada's treaty obligations to Indigenous peoples and a key focus for reconciliation. We need to reevaluate our approach to funding post-secondary education and skills training. The current model is in danger of collapse. Too many universities are caught in a spiral of fundraising to provide education of diminishing quality. Dramatic funding cuts dating back to the 1990s means universities have come to depend on part-time contract instructors, higher tuition fees, and fundraising to balance the books. The result is precarious employment for many highly educated academics, crushing debt loads for graduates as they begin their adult lives, and lost opportunities for many who simply forego higher education. The answer is simple. The federal government needs to reinvest in the system. The green budget will allocate $10 billion to post-secondary and trade school supports. Make college and university tuition free for all Canadian students. This would be financed by redirecting existing spending bursaries, tuition tax credits, saved costs of administrating the student loan system, and the hundreds of millions of dollars of student loan defaults written off every year. Tuition scholarships provided by colleges and universities can be redirected to offset other student costs tie funding in federal provincial transfers to universities, providing more to universities and colleges with a measurable focus on student professor contact, mentorship, policies of inclusion, and tenure track hires. Remove the 2% cap on increases in education funding for Indigenous students and ensure all Indigenous youth have access to post-secondary education. Forgive the portion of existing student debt that is held by the federal government respecting and supporting seniors. This part of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goals, no poverty and zero hunger. Seniors compromise a growing proportion of Canada's total population, a majority of whom are women. They built the society we now enjoy, have a wealth of experience and continue to contribute to the economic and social life of our communities and country. An essential duty of the social contract between government and citizens is to make sure people can live fulfilling and dignified lives in their senior years. Green Party pledges such as the guaranteed livable income, pharmacare, public transportation, home retrofits and affordable housing all contribute to seniors' quality of life. A Green Government will also develop a national seniors strategy with the following priorities. Ensure the Canada Pension Plan CPP, remains robust and adaptive to changing needs and circumstances by increasing over time the target income replacement rate from 25% to 50% of income received during working years. Regulate the CPP Investment Board to require divestment of coal, oil and gas shares and ensure that all investments are ethical and promote environmental sustainability. Support innovative home sharing plans and other measures to allow people to stay in their own homes as long as possible. Create more long-term care beds in neighborhood facilities. 
protect private pensions by amending the Bankruptcy and Insolvencies Act and Companies Creditors Arrangement Act to establish the preeminence of pensioners and the pension plan in the creditor hierarchy during company insolvency proceedings. In collaboration with health professionals and provincial territorial governments, develop and fund a national dementia strategy. Within 25 years, the number of Canadians living with a form of dementia could reach 1.3 million, imposing the highest economic, social, and health costs of all diseases. The strategy would support research, improve quality of life for patients and caregivers, and educate the public to increase awareness and reduce stigma. Amend the medical assistance in dying legislation to ensure that everyone has the choice of dying with dignity. This includes allowing advanced directives and guaranteeing the right to draw up a living will that gives individuals the power to limit or refuse medical intervention and treatment. Honoring Veterans This part of the platform is labeled with the Sustainable Development Goals of Good Health and Well-Being and Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions. The Green Party values the work and sacrifices of all Canadian forces and RCMP veterans and active personnel, and will ensure that veterans and their families are well cared for. The fact that suicide rates among veterans are climbing is a clear indication that they are not getting the services and supports they need. A Green Government will step up to provide long overdue comprehensive services for veterans. Provide support for all veterans, including disabled veterans, that allows them to live in dignity. Ensure that services to veterans and their family members are fully integrated and funded. Launch a national re-examination of veterans issues in December 2019, based on good faith engagement with military families and veterans, including issues relating to pensions and benefits. The goal is to identify necessary reforms and changes to programs to better meet veterans' needs. In the meantime, restore periodic payments to veterans at pre-2006 levels. Repeal the section of the Superannuation Act that denies pensions to surviving spouses of certain workers, including RCMP and veterans who married after 60. Work with veterans organizations to review and update the Veterans Charter and the processes, structure and mandate of the Veterans Review and Appeal Board to ensure all veterans are treated fairly and with respect. Ensure that all veterans have access to health care, mental health support and treatments. Military personnel with PTSD must be treated as highly valued people whose health needs to be restored rather than as liabilities who need to be removed. And that's it for this episode. We went over the Green Party vision for renewing the social contract. Now, to get the platform yourself, go to greenparty.ca slash platform. And to look up who your local Green Candidate Party is, go to greenparty.ca slash candidates and look it up by your postal code. Thank you so much for your time. Once again, we'd love to hear from you. So you can email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. If you have any platform questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send us and do our best to reply to everything as well. We're hoping to be able to share some of the questions and feedback as well, so if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, please mention that in your message. Coming up next is episode 8, where we'll cover Advancing the Just Society. I'm Sean Yo, and thanks so much for joining us. See you next episode.